Hello everyone, all who are in one body of Christ, our Savior welcomes to this year that has given us together. Today we will be meditating upon, look towards the real source of restoration. Before I start, let's see what Shakir talks about in this topic. Psalm chapter 121 verse 1 to 3 and 5 to 7. I lifted my eyes to the hills, from where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. He will not let your foot be moved. He who mo- keeps you will not slumber. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade on your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all evil. He will keep your life. Now let's see what you can learn from the verse you just read. Yesterday I received a better understanding through my friend and my mentor. He mentioned and advised that I must look at the time of the psalmist and compare his words in our time today. The culture of then and the culture we should follow and reflect on upon today. The psalmist said, I lift up my eyes to the hills, for where does my help come from? He said that before at the time the common experience of God to meet with his people was the higher places. Mount Sinai, Mount Zion, and Mount Olive. But for today, for us, it is should be no other mountain other than Mount of Calvary. The place that the whole humanity received the great mercy only through grace. We must look towards the ultimate sacrifice that paid our debt and purchased our freedom by his blood. Often we try God as our last resort. We try all our efforts and when we lost all hope and end up with hopelessness, con- hopeless conditions, we come to God and put ourselves under the cross to be redeemed and restored. With every other remedy for pain relief first and after they fall into the pit of despair, they cry out to God, but he still answers because he is a good God. He has assurance. Why don't we try to going to him and save ourselves from unwanted pain? Let's go through the fire with him. Let us not re-enter the lion's den alone and take him with us. Because he said his grace is sufficient and his power works well in our weaknesses. When the first sign of a sniffle appears, run to him. Let's get to his presence and imagine ourselves at the Calvary, at the empty tomb, at the time when we sense a storm approaching towards us. Run to him. Don't wait until the last minute or after the storm destroys. Let's call him when we are in the midst of despair. Stay under his watchful umbrella of protection. Meditate like this. I lift my eyes up to the Mount Calvary. From where it is, from there my help comes. My help comes to the Lord who made heaven and earth and showed his mercy to give me an un- undeserving everlasting life. He who paid all my debt will not let my foot be moved. He who keeps me will never slumber, but my Lord is my keeper. The Lord is my shade and on my right hand. The sun shall not strike me by day, nor by the moon at night. The Lord will keep me from all evil. He will keep my life. This message just gives a promise. To the promise is, Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Let's close this time in prayer to go. Please join me in this prayer. Dear Lord, Holy Father, mighty, wonderful God, Lord, as we settle down to sleep in the relative peace and safety of our own homes, we want to lift up our brave men and women in uniform who are serving in so many difficult and dangerous places and are under such harsh and uncomfortable circumstances. Lord, we pray for your protection and guidance in the tremendous challenges that are called to face as they strive to protect our country and maintain peace and security in various situations. Lord, give me the wisdom to those that are authority that they may take the right choices and be directed by you in many decisions they are called up to make. And may those that are under their authority be covered by your protecting hand and return home in due course to their family and friends that have been left to behind. Lord, we know that in this peacekeeping role, there are many emotions and hardships that our military will inevitably have to face. And so we pray that you would be close to those that are lonely, give strength to the weary, help to the despairing, peace to the those that are disturbed, and grace to all who are facing the many hardships of danger that are associated with the military duties. 
And most of all, we pray that the men and women in uniform would come to a saving faith in the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior in days ahead. In Jesus' holy name I pray, amen. Have a blessed day, everyone. If God's going to talk to you tomorrow.